It's a lovely day, and I was in the mood for a bit of good news. It turns out that a new study conducted by researchers at the University of Pennsylvania's Perelman School of Medicine had surprising results when they studied the cognitive function of regular cannabis users. If cannabis is at all of interest to you, chances are you've heard a few common claims about cannabis use that have been floating around. Specifically, there was the eye-catching headline that said, Cannabis use in adolescence causes permanent lowering of IQ. That study claimed to have found that cannabis use caused a significant drop in the IQ of the user, and that if someone consumed cannabis when they were too young, if they started using young enough, it would irreversibly alter their brain chemistry and make them dumber. That study was and is on the extreme end of the spectrum of cannabis research. The good news that I want to bring you today is a new study, a meta-analysis of 69 different studies conducted over a 44-year time span, between 1973 and 2017. The researchers noted that, quote, substantial shifts in perception and policy regarding cannabis have recently occurred, with use of cannabis increasing while its perceived harm decreases. One possible risk of increased cannabis use is poorer cognitive functioning, especially in youth, unquote. Their study sought to find what association, if any, there was with frequent or heavy cannabis use and cognitive function uh, by looking at populations of teenagers and young adults. So of all of these studies, spanning multiple decades, there was almost 9,000 people studied, with about a quarter of them being frequent or heavy cannabis users, and the rest consuming it infrequently or not at all. By analyzing the results of all of these studies, the researchers were able to determine that there was indeed a positive association between cannabis use and cognitive dysfunction. Except, it wasn't nearly as large as the earlier study with the eye-catching headline had found. This modern study reported a small overall effect. And also, unlike the first study, this small effect didn't vary based on age of the user or the age that they began consuming cannabis. And most importantly, where the first study said that these effects could be permanent, this newer and more comprehensive study found that the diminished cognitive function lasted for just 72 hours, or three days, as long as the person spent that time consuming zero cannabis. From the conclusion of their paper, the researchers say, and I quote, Although other outcomes, e.g. psychosis, were not examined in the included studies, results indicate that previous studies of cannabis in youth may have overstated the magnitude and persistence of cognitive deficits associated with use. Reported deficits may reflect residual effects from acute use or withdrawal, unquote. Now, a moment ago, when I talked about uh, common claims that were floating around, another one of these claims is that cannabis use, especially in adolescence, will accelerate the onset of psychosis symptoms if you're genetically vulnerable to them. Note that this doesn't mean that cannabis use will cause psychosis. It's just if you're more predisposed to it, it might aggravate or accelerate those symptoms. So your mileage may vary. This claim about the risk of cannabis use accelerating the onset of psychosis, as far as I know, is true. But psychosis wasn't a variable that was examined in this recent study. They only looked at overall cognitive function. Now, another common claim is that cannabis is not addictive, and that there aren't any associated symptoms that come from stopping cold turkey. This may or may not be true. Uh, again, your mileage may vary. You know, it depends on the context. If you smoke weed every night to help you get to sleep, if you stop smoking weed, then you will definitely have difficulty falling asleep for the first few nights. If you're an everyday recreational smoker, if you stop altogether, it'll take your body a few days to adjust to it. You might find that you have no appetite for that time, for those few days, and you might be a little bit more irritable. But as this recent study suggests, this typically wears off within 72 hours. 
And one of the reasons why cannabis use in general is not nearly as addictive as other drugs and why the withdrawal symptoms compared to, say, alcohol are relatively benign. I mean, alcohol withdrawals can kill you for crying out loud. But withdrawal from cannabis is just mildly uncomfortable for a short time. And this is because within cannabis, there's no chemicals that inherently cause a dependency. It's not like nicotine. Nicotine makes you crave more nicotine. There's nothing analogous to this in cannabis that makes you crave cannabis. If people develop an addiction to it or they abuse it, you know, they just use it too much and it gets in the way of the rest of their life, this is, uh, it's like a, a, like a pleasure addiction. It's not a whole lot different from somebody uh, compulsively watching sports all day or somebody who eats way more cheeseburgers or pizza than they should. Excessive use is just an unhealthy life habit. It's not an intrinsic negative of the substance itself. And that's important to clarify and it's important to understand. So if you're one of those people who consumes cannabis, either infrequently, moderately, or frequently, take a little solace in this data that suggests that it's not nearly as bad for your cognitive function as it's made out to be. <laughs>